Hi, crafty friends. This is Amanda. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Michigan. Welcome to my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. You guys make my day. All right, so I'm going to start with the hand pen pedal set. Try to say that a couple times fast. And the coordinating DSP. This is not what I was going to start out with. This was going to be a different card altogether. I'll show you what I mean after I finish this card up. But I am going to use this sketch here on my little phone. I really like it. And I like the fact that it has crumb cake in it. I I like crumb cake. I'm a crumb cake person, but I'm not a crumb cake user because I forget about crumb cake. How about you guys? All right. I'm going to make an uh, A7 card here. So that is a five by 10, I'm sorry, a seven by 10 scored in half at five. So you take one and a half inches off, one inch off, and then score it in half at five. And then I will make a panel of crumb cake that is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. I'm a panel type of crafter. Are you guys, do you guys always make a panel? Is it just me? Normally, I make a white card base and then a panel of a color, but uh, and then white again. But anyways, what? Let me know. Uh, I don't know if it's because I don't use the thick whisper white, but I always make a panel. Uh, I guess, but oh, not whisper white, basic white. Now, all right. I really like this crumb cake and this blushing bride together. Gorgeous, isn't it? Very, very, very pretty. I need to mat it. But the Blushing Bride, because the paper is watercolory, doesn't really match the Blushing Bride. And I'm a matchy, matchy person. Okay, so I try black and I try silver. What I don't try is white. And since it's Blushing Bride and white, um, <laughs> maybe I should have tried a white, uh, you know, a matte. No big deal. This is, the DSP is two inches by six inches. Oh, I'm sorry, by four and three quarters. And I'm pulling out some circles as well uh, to, you know, finish the uh, sketch when I decide that I probably should just change my DSP. This has become my go-to piece of DSP in the pack, which sometimes a good thing and sometimes is a bad thing because, you know... It's easy to get into repetition when you use the same DSP, but that's okay. I really like it. Like I said, this DSP is cut at two inches by four and three quarters. And then I decided to use the Heather Highland and mat that at, and that's cut at two and a quarter by four and three quarters. I want a little at the top and little at the bottom, but nothing on the sides. And I um, also don't want too much of the purple showing, just a little bit. So yeah, I there's lots of things that there's lots of colors that you could do with this. Um, you can do the I think it's bumblebee or pale papaya, the green, the pool party, lots of things, lots of different colors in this DSP. Um, if you would like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. It would make my day. Um, here, if you wanted to save some money, you could just do a strip of Heather Highland at the top and the bottom and save a little bit of paper, but I have lots of Heather Highland. So I will use my stamp and seal, just the regular stamp and seal, not the stamp and seal plus. And I'm glad that I did. I really didn't push this down, but hmm. now I'm checking to see what, what size circle I can go and still see a little bit of this beautiful paper in the background. Because, you know, we use four and three quarters of an inch and you actually only see like, you know, half of it. So anyways, I end up cutting a piece of basic white out of a circle that is just about three and a quarter inches, you know, around. No, diameter. The diameter is about three and a quarter inches. Uh, I use my mini emboss machine, which is great. I love it. And I love that it has a little nickname, uh, Mini Emboss. That's what the cool kids call it, apparently. I just started using it because, never mind. Anyways, I cut another large circle out of my uh, layering circle dies from, I believe, Sizzix. But it's a little bit too big. But while doing that, I noticed that 
my uh, panel of crumb cake is a little bit askew. And so since I'm crazy, I lift that up and make it perfectly perfect. You know how that is. I have these Sizzix circles that are, uh, what I call them is group A and group B, because if you interchange them, you get a very thin border. It's beautiful. So probably like mm, an eighth or a sixteenth, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch difference. So it's great. And I love the fact that I can get a little, just a little bit different. I don't know that if I like scallops, but I don't have scallops to fit these. But these are bigger because I make A7 size cards than the Stampin' Up! circles because I make A7 size cards. Really simple card sketch, but very effective. Do you like it? All right, say you like it. And if you don't, pretend that you do. No. <laughs> Let me know if you like the sketch, if you like the set, if you bought this set. I was very surprised. I talked to some people and they're like, oh, I didn't even get that set. I'm like, really? Very unique. I really uh, love the paper and I knew that the die cuts were great. And um, I did like the ability to do some watercoloring because you know me. I'm going to stamp the sentiment feel better friend in some black hybrid ink. I really like how dark this hybrid ink is. I think that sometimes we forget uh, feel better friend can be like a get well soon. Like, you know, you have the sniffles or the flu or um, sinuses or whatever, but it also can mean that, you know, you're feeling blue or they're feeling blue and you want them to cheer them up a little bit. So this is a great sentiment. I'm going to use some Tombow Mono uh, um, liquid glue for this die cut because it um, stays sticky when dry, when it dries. And so it's not going anywhere. Now, a little bit about this die cut. I um, use some off-brand paper, off-brand cardstock, I should say, and cut it uh, three times and then put the silver on top. So it looks like a chipboard. Very nice way to give your uh, intricate die cut some dimension. Speaking of dimension, I'm going to use some foam adhesive sheets. And I'm, cut I'm cutting them in like little strips uh, to pop this up, I have a lot of, well, I don't have a lot, but I have enough here so that when going through the mail, it'll be perfect. The actual foam adhesive strips are double the height. So, hmm, that's something to think about. And I wanted mine just, you know, because I already have some, some dimension here. I'm going to use these fantabulous black matte enamel dots, maybe black matte dots. Love them. They look amazing with this sketch. Now, I wasn't happy right here, so I am going to put another one in the middle. So two on the top and three on the bottom. And how you do it to get the middle one is you put the right one on, the left one on, and then the middle kind of just, you know, marks itself with your eyes. So pretty perfect. I, well, not perfect. Look, let's, let's be honest. I didn't even put the circle perfectly straight. And that's why I could get that three one down there. I really like it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right. So I started out in a different direction and I thought I would just show you what the different direction was in the beginning. At the end, I meant at the beginning. What I start, never mind. So I'm going to start out with some Coastal Cabana, some Pacific Point and some Highland Heather, and I'm going to do the smooshing technique. This is my mm, water media mat. I'm going to smush, I'm going to push my ink on the mat, um, add some water to it, spray some water on my watercolor cardstock, and then smush my paper into it, and then drying it in between each smushes, each smush. <laughs> so that I get some texture and you can see I have some fantabulous texture. Bam, blah, blah, blah. Great texture right now. I did at the end, I'll show you, I did try to use this with some basic white to see if I could smush. And it just, it was a hot mess because, you know, the watercolor paper makes it, it just does. All right. So this is where I'm going to cut out my very pretty, um, die cut. And I have these two die cuts attached together, but you really don't need the outline. You just need the one die. You do not need the outline die, which I guess I didn't know. 
but you will see right there, I didn't need that. And leave it in your die and use your little take your pick rotary die picker cutter thingy and get it out that way because I took a long time to get all four of these um, intricate die cuts popped out. I mean, a long time. It wasn't fun because I forgot to use my little wheelie thingy. All right. I'm going to use some Barely Art Glue and my silicone craft mat because when you use your craft mat, you can uh, get glue on it and not worry about it. This background is very loud and I love it. I'll use a tea ruler to get this straight. Yes, I finally got a tea ruler. Paid four or oh, not even two whole dollars for it because I had a 50% off coupon. Amazing. All the neat things that, you know, make your life easier. And uh, then I thought, I, I, you know, the I'd use this happy birthday from the ice cream corner that I cut in half, but it was too small and I didn't want to use more vellum because I, I'm kind of, I'm, you know, I'm frugal with my vellum. So then I take out the Delicate Delilah set, which is a free $100, it's in the $100 category, free set with a $100 purchase. And I um, use You Inspire Me, the sentiment. Great everyday sentiment, could be anything. I uh, use Highland Heather, but I wasn't a fan of the Highland Heather. So I'm like, well, I'll just, you know, use some uh, silver embossing paste, silver embossing powder. And because the Heather Highland was on vellum, it didn't dry very quickly. So I was able to emboss this and this works out very well. Okay, it works out terribly. Because you can't read it because the back is so, well, you just can't read it. So I'm like, well, maybe I put like a something in the white back there. Now I'm just testing. This would, I would never just, but, you know, I'm like, maybe I could put like a strip of white back there, but I don't really like the strip of white. So uh, how would you um, finish this card? What would you do? I am going to add some... Uh, Heather Highland ribbon that has this beautiful silver sparkly in it, but it still doesn't work. So let me know what you would do. I'd love it if you subscribe. Thanks, friends.